Over the years, Roblox has went through many eras, not only as a platform, but the style of games have changed drastically. Have you ever felt that Roblox has become boring or different, or maybe you stopped playing Roblox entirely? We always tend to blame this on Roblox, what if we are the ones who changed? Or maybe it's both. In this video, I'll show you the history of Roblox, specifically the great shifts in the platform, the founding games of each genre, and when they occurred. PvP games slash shooter games have been a thing on Roblox since the very beginning. This is a given since shooter games on the rise in the late 2000s, and around 2008, post beta Roblox, some of the most legendary PvP games to ever be made were created, like Sword Fight on the Heights, Mike's Ultimate Paintball, Brick Battles, and Call of Robloxia. Mike's Ultimate Paintball would later become the first Roblox game to reach 1 million visits, and Sword Fight on the Heights would pioneer sword fighting free for all games that changed maps. These early Roblox games had a special little essence to them since the creators didn't make them for money, but rather for fun and attention. With the success of PvP on Roblox, elements of these games would be transferred over to almost every genre on Roblox. RPG games have been an essential part of gaming since the 70s with tabletop games like D&D and getting massively popular in the 90s and early 2000s with World of Warcraft and RuneScape, so of course early developers took an interest in making RPG games for themselves. The first RPGs on Roblox were Dungeon Delver, The Tales of Ranger's Cape, and the Silverwing RPG. These games were super fun because you could grind them infinitely and always see progress in your character in the form of getting stronger. City games have been the largest genre on Roblox for the past 10 years and have been a thing on Roblox as developers learn how to build. These games are in towns where players roleplay as humans and sometimes fictional characters and play life in the video game. Some of the earliest town and city games were Roblox City, Town of Robloxia, and Work at a Pizza Place. It used to get wild in Robloxia. Although this is technically a subgenre, it's so big it might as well be its own. The genre that would use RPG and PvP and mash them together would be anime games. During the late 2000s and 2010s, anime was definitely looked down upon, and if you got caught popping Bankai in the hallway, you would probably get shoved in the locker. But on Roblox, there's a community for everyone. The first notable anime games were Land of the Ninja, Naruto Online Adventures, Dragon Ball Online, Bleach Halls of Turns, and One Piece Legendary. Mini games have been a thing on Roblox since the very beginning, but some games that massively popularized it are When the Ballsies Come, Survive the Disasters, and Natural Disaster Survival. This genre was super fun, so fun that I even bought a gun with tickets. This genre would later become massive on Roblox as the constant change in gameplay was perfect for our prepubescent brains. Meaning instead of playing Roblox for 30 minutes, I can now ride away and play it for the entire day. Survive the Disasters would also be the first game to reach 10 million visits. In 2008, we saw the rise of tycoon games such as Bread Factory Tycoon, Cave Miner Tycoon, Two Player Company Tycoon, and Two Player Gun Tycoon. Bread Factory Tycoon was the first ever tycoon on Roblox, having most of the features tycoons still have today, and Two Player Gun Tycoon would be one of the biggest tycoons for a long time. Obbies got popular around the same time as tycoons. These were simple games where you parkour from different objects to reach an objective or checkpoint. But you see, Tycoons and obbies kind of lack creativity, but who cares when everyone playing them has the power to imagine that the game they're playing that was made and likely copy and pasted in 30 seconds is actually a work of art. Simulators are games where players simulate an action. Now that might sound obvious, but boy, they threw that definition to the curb. But early simulators actually simulated experiences, for example, A Whale's Life, Drive Blocks Unlimited, Natural Disaster Survival, Pilot Training Flight Simulator, and Titanic Simulation. These were some of the earliest simulators and were pretty massive and innovative for the time. Organs have been a part of Roblox since 2006, usually being creepy pastas made on the Roblox forums. Early examples of horror games on Roblox are Torture Chamber and Underground Base. Underground Base would later be copied and turned into Area 51 games, which I vividly remember having nightmares about as a kid. Those are most of the major genres on Roblox's origins, and if you paid attention, you might have seen a common theme here. But stay with me for a second. With the PvP and shooter games genre, you can visually see the evolution of games with weapons becoming more realistic, recoil and aiming being more refined, and maps becoming better. We got games like Phantom Forces, Mad Paintball, Rogue Lineage, Deep Woken, Arsenal, and many more. But something hasn't changed. RPG games have become large, open-world experiences with working economies, trading, bosses, world events, clans, guilds. We got games like Sorbus 1, 2, and 3, Dungeon Quest, Treasure Quest, Hexaria, Arcane Odyssey, and Arcane Lineage. But something still hasn't changed. Anime games that once frowned upon genre has become normalized, and anyone of all ages can enjoy them. It's become so popular that some of the biggest anime games even break Roblox the website. Over the years we got games like Beyond Beta, Bleach Primera, Grand Peace Online, Type Soul, Blocks Fruits, and many many more. But yet something still hasn't changed. You see, I first started playing Roblox when I was 5 years old, 
and now I'm almost 18. Where did time go? Mini games, tycoons, obbies, and similar as once very big genres with creative ideas, now a wasteland for dumbed down copied and pasted format, but we still had fun with them though. We had epic mini games, dinosaur simulator, weightlifting simulator, mining simulator, broken bones, bee swarm simulator, and many, many more games. I remember when simulators were really getting popular in 2016, like last year ago. Wait a minute. 2016 was eight years ago. <sighs> the horror genre went from walking simulators to rural versus storytelling, scripting, animations, modeling, and became a massively popular genre with a massive community. With games like Doors, Identity Fraud, Camping, Evade, and many more. But I opened up this video with a question. Did Roblox change or did we change? Now the answer we told ourselves this whole time is that Roblox is at fault. But from the beginning in 2006 till now in 2024, something still hasn't changed. Every single game here, in some way should perform is aimed towards an audience of kids. Now this was fine when we were kids, but we aren't now. Some of us. I'm not saying you're old because I'm also a part of this demographic. And I'm not old, I just started playing robots when I was out the womb. Many of the popular robots games carry the same target audience. The only difference is, we got replaced. The new generation of kids on robots would probably get bored of the things we played, and we would probably get cringed out by the things they play. Like how does Toilet Tower Defense, a skibbity toilet game, have six times as many players as Debulkin? Way ain't no way. way. If you think about it that way, Roblox technically did not change. But what did change was the time. In the blink of an eye, multiple decades had passed. I remember when I could hop on Roblox and not think about any responsibilities, but now it's just like so different now. I don't get it. It's so hard not to think about the good times, but at the same time, all we have left is memory. But it has to be Roblox's fault, right? I mean, I definitely changed as well, but we enjoyed what we had while we had it. So let's not knock what they have while they have it. Yeah, they might look back a few years from now and see Skibbity Toilet as cringe, but I did the same thing at the crazy things a young Bell was doing in Town of Roblox. Maybe Roblox isn't the problem. And maybe we are. And even if Roblox is the problem, we created Roblox, so the monster that destroys our fun is our fun. The players are the developers, and the developers are the players. It's been over 10 years since Roblox themselves actually made a game and a year since Roblox actually made an item. No one action is to blame for the current state of Roblox. Not simulators, not RNGs, not tycoons and obbies, and not even the brain rot. But at some point, it'll be time to pass the controller, the keyboard, the mouse, and the fortunately, the time is not now because I'll be damned if I lose to a skibbit. Hey, YouTube thinks you'll like this video on the screen. You should click it. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and also join my Discord server, link in the description and pinned comments. All music in this video is made by DM Dokoro. Have a nice day.